Hello everybody, Adam from developphp.com here once again with another fireworks graphic design video tutorial for creating Valentine's Day vector greeting cards or illustrations for your sweetie or whatever you're doing. Okay, so this is the finished product of what you'll be learning how to render in this video and we show how to make these little vector rose petals and the chocolate coming down and all that good stuff in preparation for the next video that we're going to be putting out which is going to show you how to make vector chocolates. This is really just a scene that we've created that's going to showcase our chocolates and then we can write up top happy Valentine's Day, do whatever we want after we get the chocolates in place in the next video. This one you're going to learn how to make this exact scene that you see which is kind of like a shell for the next video. And this lesson comes courtesy of an idea that I liked a whole bunch that Share It All SE suggested on YouTube in the comment section. They said it would be awesome with a tutorial for how to make vector chocolate because during production of this tutorial that we just put out, I was mentioning that you can put chocolates or whatever kind of rose petals and things that you want inside of there. So since uh, Share It All SE wanted to see some vector chocolate, I thought that was a great idea. I like chocolate and I'm going to do it right now. Create a new fireworks document. I'll make mine 900 by 500. Yours can be any size you want, and resolution 72 is good for the web. Now I'm going to grab my pen tool. And you can see I have a red fill already set on my pen tool. And I'll just set out on making a curved shape, whatever kind of shape I want. Let's give it a sharp edge right there, then come around here and finish it out. And let's draw another shape also. Actually, let's go ahead and make this one straight up and down like that. So now let's draw another shape. And this one I want to have a real sharp point here at the tip. Now let's highlight both of those and we'll go into our gradients for the fill and we'll give it an elliptical gradient. Now where it's white I'm going to change that to bright red. And now I'm going to move this up a little bit about right there. The same with this one. And you can even turn them to where they're angled correctly. You can also stretch these out to where they're oblong. You see? If you use ellipse, you can stretch them out to where they're oblong shape. So that's what I'll do. I'll have it a little bit oblong. And I'll set it right about there. Let's turn that a little bit. Make it oblong. And there. Now, with both of them highlighted, by pressing shift, you can highlight multiple things. I'm going to go and give it a filter. first filter I'll give it is a shadow of inner shadow. I'm going to turn the angle on it to where it's more coming from the bottom. And I'm going to make this one white. And I want this one to come in a little bit more than 7. Right there looks good. I'm going to adjust that angle just a little bit more right there. And I'm going to make it a pink instead of solid white. Okay, now I'm going to highlight them again. And I'm going to add another inner shadow in pretty much the same direction that other shadow is going. Right about there. And this one I want to be a very dark red. So I'm going to go into my color palette and make it a dark, dark red. Okay and make it come in just a little bit more, maybe right about there. And actually the white one, I'm going to decrease that one just a little bit. 27 is a bit much. Right about there looks good to me. Okay, now let's grab these two guys and let's give them one more inner shadow on the top. Inner shadow coming directly from the top and let's make it that really dark red. Even darker than that. A little bit darker than that. Okay, alright, that looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to highlight both of those, press Control c Control v and then I'm going to modify and flatten them. That way I can just get a really good look how they're going to appear when I shrink them down to the size that they're going to be within my artwork. And that looks pretty good to me. I can live with that. You can take all the time you want to tweak your rose petals out. Okay, so I removed that because I really don't need it. I was just checking things out. Okay, I drew out one more shape just so I have a little more variety in my rose petals when I scatter them around within my scene. I'm going to make one more shape and give it the same effects that I gave these guys here, but I won't do it on video just so we can save some time. But you guys saw exactly how I did these. Okay, so there's the three that I'm going to work with. Now if you want to save these to work on them later or make new ones or whatever, you can just go to Control X, File, New, OK, Control V, you can save this as editable petals or whatever, editable rose petals. Or you could have just pressed Control C while you were here. I don't know why I control. I don't know why I cut those out. Press Control Z and they'll be right back. So what I'll do is go one at a time, modify, flatten, 
highlight, modify, flatten, highlight, modify, flatten. Now I can resize these. So I'll just grab all of them together, resize them, make them any size that I want them to be. Now I can scatter these around. And like I said before, for a better variety of petals, you would just make a few more. Instead of just having three, you might want to make, you know, seven different kinds or whatever. But I think three will work for what I'm trying to get across here. Okay, so to scatter these around, we can just press Control C, Control V, and we can also manipulate the size of some of these to make them look not so identical to the other ones. And you can manipulate the way it's oriented, like that. So I'll grab all of those again, Control C, Control V, Control V. Okay, so that's the orientation that I want. Now what I'm going to do is grab my pen tool, and you can see I have a brown selected. Now you can go into your color palette and select any kind of brown kind of hue that you want. You can see mine is set to red 116, green 52, blue 10. You can see all of my numbers here if you want to get exact like that. I'm going to put that in my custom colors too. So I'm going to use my pen tool now. And I'm going to click down. I'm going to hold my shift key to make perfect straight lines or perfectly angled lines as I go around. We go right about here, then down to here. Then once I hit right here, I'm going to make a wavy line all the way across. So you can start right about there and just pull the line. Click, pull the line. Click, pull the line. Click, and then pull the line. And then click on the last one. And it looks like this edge needs to come down a little bit more, so that's what I'll do. Okay. Now, once I have that in place, I'm going to highlight it. Press Control C, Control V. Now, the one on top, you can change to some other color just so you know what's going on. You move it up a little bit. And actually, we're going to save one more. Control C, Control V. Move this one up a little bit from that one and bring it back to its brown color. So, what we'll do to this one is we're going to punch it. So, let's grab the one on the bottom and then the blue one that we put on top. We'll go to go to modify, combine paths, and punch. Now what that gives us is like this ribbony type shape that matches that one. So what I'm going to do now is add an effect of inner shadow and make it white or creamy chocolate color, whatever. And make sure it's uh, 270, so it's just coming straight down. Seven's good. Let's make this one, eh, maybe three. That way it'll kind of look like there's a river of chocolate coming down through there. Let's make that a little bit less. Yeah, that's good. You can mess with your effects. And I'm going to make sure it covers this little guy too. So I'm going to manipulate these edges a little bit. Or I could just move this guy up a little bit right there. That works too. Now I'm going to grab a rectangle and I'm going to put it covering the whole shape of the canvas. And then I'm going to send that to back. Control shift down arrow key. Now I'm going to highlight that square or that rectangle. I'm going to go to gradient and give it a satin. Okay, now with this thing, I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to give it another inner shadow just to play with the effects a little bit. And this one, I'm going to make the dark brown. You can see what that does. It kind of blends with the white. And this thing, you can also give this effects. For instance, we can give it an inner shadow from the bottom of black. Make sure it's coming up from the bottom, 90 degrees. You can make it dig in as deep as you want and then fade in. You can bring down the opacity on that so you have something like that. It just gives a little more texture to everything. And you can also come in with a little bit on top too and then bring down the opacity. And that'll just give it a little more chocolatey, milk chocolatey looking type texture, okay? So now what we're going to do. So in the next video, we're going to show you how to make some vector chocolates. And that's what really this was all about. I just wanted to have a nice scene for my chocolates when I go to start to make them. And I didn't want people to be like, oh, Adam, how'd you make the rose petals? How'd you make the drippy chocolate? So in the very next video, in this empty area here, we're going to make some vector chocolates. And then we'll make a greeting card out of this whole thing.